think we're at a place in time uh, in our life where um, we really need to act now. And, and I don't think, uh, you know, to be totally frank, you know, I think all the things that we can do, you know, in our daily lives, whether it be recycle a newspaper, recycle um, your bottles, those are all great and dandy, but on the larger scale, that's, <laughs> that's a drop in the bucket. We need to really collectively really do some revolutionary change. Otherwise, I think our children's children are screwed. Our economic system, or our neoclassical economic system, has done just that. They've relieved us of the responsibility of being stewards of uh, the land. They've relieved us of the responsibility to be accountable for action so that we no longer have to be honest in how we assess the cost of things. If you can externalize a cost of production, we talked about oil earlier in our conversation today, the, um, the pollution around the factories, the smog in the air, the sinking of the giant oil tankers, the um, all the different consequences that have been pushed off on either the public or the environmental community. Um, that is not fair. That is not honest accounting. Um, it's not showing compassion for the people who have been exploited through the degradation of their environment, and it is not being responsible for yourselves and your corporation or the business that you do, and it is not respecting future generations. We need to bring those ethical values back into capitalism because capitalism is the best um, system of economics that we have found for distribution of wealth and goods, but not if you strip the ethics out of it. Then it becomes a cancer. It's the major challenge facing humanity. And uh, it's already gone beyond what we can do very much about, in my opinion. So the really hard task ahead of us is to attempt to mitigate the effects on people around the world, especially people at uh, sea level. We are in a time where our decisions in the next couple of decades can tip things in a couple different directions. The point that I don't get is why do people not care about their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, and on until the seventh generation? Why does my convenience today take precedence over all of the generations to come? The thought that my kid has to live for fear that her planet isn't going to be there for her, you know, that's mind, mind boggling. Uh, it's the first generation probably of kids that have had this concern. I grew up having to duck under the desk, you know, for a nuclear war, and that was bad enough. But they didn't really impress upon us that the whole planet was going to go. And that's what our kids are facing right now. What? What we as humans have potentially done to our environment is enormous. I don't think we can really turn the clock back. I hope that we can do a better job going forward, but it's time to pay the piper. I think that, you know, if we destroy this planet, or actually we won't probably destroy the planet, we'll destroy its ability to keep us on it. Uh, the planet, I think, will survive, but all much of the life that's on it now could be very negatively impacted. Agricultural industry as a whole is one of the biggest polluters um, there are, and that was really apparent when Katrina hit and sort of the dead zone in the Gulf Coast was made apparent to a lot of people, and that's just because of agricultural runoff into the Mississippi River. It has to do with the people that are working on a farm or working in a store or working in anywhere else. The attitude of the managers and the attitude of the people who work there, what, whether or not you're going to be a polluter or not. There's 40 cow farmers every day lose more manure down the river than we lose in a year with a thousand cows. Do we want to have a sustainable agriculture system or do we want to go better and have a restorative agricultural system? I would vote for the latter, the restorative agricultural system whereby you operate by principle. These principles could be that um, that we will be building ecological capital, that when we farm, the soils are getting better, the carbon is being sequestered out of the atmosphere, the biodiversity within the soil structure is increasing, the ecological resilience within the soil and the, and the whole landscape is increasing. To me, an agricultural system that still produces goods that we need, but is also building ecological capital, would be um, the way to do agriculture. And also the agricultural system needs to 
follow that same principle in regards to our social capital. Right now, I would argue that our industrialized, transnational, agricultural system is exploiting the social capital out of the system. We're exploiting the farmer. The farmer, his inputs are controlled by corporations. His product sales are controlled by corporations to a good extent. This is not this does not hold true across the board. I know a lot of good people that are doing an excellent job and running the system. But the basic corporate agricultural um, and I should say publicly traded corporate system, Conagra, um, ADM, things of that nature, Monsanto, um, they really don't give a damn about the farmer. We're on the precipice of a global food crisis and a land crisis. And it, like, how are we going to make those two things come together? And I'm concerned about it and I don't know the answers. Like, I mean, I think, you know, it's great. I can, I've got plenty of water here. I can live here and, and feed myself and like, you know, eat selectively, I, you know, but, but it, it, there's some sense that I could subsist here. But that's just me. That's not like the rest of the world. And so it's, you know, you, you root yourself and you do the best you can in your space. But how, how are you going to help everybody else, too? And I don't know that answer, and it concerns me a lot. All we have to do now is figure out, okay, we've learned the mistakes and fix them. Because we can do it, and I have every faith that we can and will. And this planet is very resilient and will, you know, be here after we go. We're going to be one of the first things to go. So, yes, let's use our minds and, and, our, and our spirits and do this. And I'm just appalled at how misinformed people are about the situations, how little activity people have in their government, how it's... I, I, I voted for you. That, that's your responsibility. You go do that. Well, I'll tell you what. One person can't do this. Thirty people can't do this. We have to do this as a society or we won't be able to do it at all. You know, our food choices have profound consequences, but most people don't think very much about their food choices and are eating in a way that is harmful to themselves, harmful to the animals, harmful to the planet, uh, that is inconsistent with their own values and inconsistent with their own interests. So once people start thinking about it, uh, and with the internet, you know, there's great opportunity for people to learn and to share information and to, to become more educated, not only about the problems, but about what they can do to prevent these problems. Let's just change our attitude start doing things that affect the pollution level or the carbon differently. Yeah. Let's walk. Let's get up off our butt and walk. It's better for us. We'd live longer. We'd live healthier. We wouldn't have to go to the doctor so many times. That's going to change our carbon footprint immediately. Just let's uh, raise our own vegetables instead of ship them here from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, just do things together as a community again instead of having to go on a 5,000 mile vacation. Right. There's many things we could do that would change things. And we don't want to have to have that thrust upon us in a few years when we, somebody says the barrel of oil is empty. We want to be able to stretch that out as far as we can with as least effect as we can possibly do that. I think it's really been, you know, deeply connected to this kind of Christian Judeo guilt system where, you know, it's like we're going to guilt people into doing good. And I think we need to, you know, get out of that mental model and really start to look forward and bring positive change. And how do we talk about these things in a new light? How do we talk about, you know, the opportunity that lies before us and, and, and the opportunity of, of globally and locally really connecting at a meta and a micro scale to really start bringing systemic change, to really start educating people about how can we all start collectively making a difference. And I'm not talking about just recycling bottles here, recycling bottles there. How can we start changing whole education paradigms? How can we start training engineers that they understand the true cost, you know, of the consumption of the company that they're going to work at? And I think, you know, the, the task is daunting, but I think it's extremely doable. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer in the human spirit and positivity. And I think if we all come together and, 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 and see the opportunity that lies before us and, and, and not just the devastation, I think, I think we can do it. Wake up. Stop being so lazy. Get involved. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about us. If we can't do these things together, then we are, we're, we're going down. We're going to be a fourth world country in no time at all. And it's up to all of us to make a difference and to make the change, to be the change that you want to see.